Welcome back to Simple Science, and in this video, in our A-Level Chemistry Revision Series, we will be covering molecular geometry. Molecular geometry is basically a method in which we can represent molecules, covalent molecules, in a 3D manner that is not the simple displayed or structural formula that is basically the detailed way in which you have learned how to describe a molecule previously in your IGCSE level. So, with molecular geometry, we hope to form a 3D shape in which the atoms arrange around the central atom of a covalent molecule. Okay, so the shape of a covalent molecule can be deduced from two things. So the first thing is the number of electron bonding pairs. So electron bonding pairs are essentially pairs of electrons that are involved in covalent bonding between two different atoms. Okay. And the other thing is the number of electron lone pairs. So the lone pairs are, as you can see in the bottom left diagram, the pairs of electrons that are not the pair of electrons that are not involved in any covalent bonding at all. Okay. So the aim of this video is to help you follow a strategic way in which we can determine the geometric shape of a molecule. So before we get to the method, there are a few things worth taking note concerning atomic arrangement and electron arrangement. So as you can see in our these two molecules on the left and the right, now on the left we have a methane molecule and on the right we have an ammonia molecule. So their electron arrangements are exactly the same. So we have four electron pairs for both of the molecules and as I will talk about later, they will repel each other equally and form a tetrahedral arrangement around the central atom. So in the methane case, since there are four atoms surrounding the central atom, the atomic arrangement is exactly the same as the electronic arrangement. However, in the case on the right, on the ammonia molecule, we only have three atoms and one lone pair. So as a result, the geometric shape will be slightly different. It will be pretty much the same without the top atom. And the bond angle has been decreased slightly, which we will talk about later. So essentially what I, I'm trying to get here is that the electron arrangement does not necessarily correspond to the atomic arrangement. So the method that we are going through here is to determine the atomic arrangement with consideration of the electron arrangement. But basically the atomic arrangement is not the same as the electron arrangement for all cases, okay? So let's get to the method. The shape of a covalent molecule is described by two features. So the first feature is the bond angle. So the bond angle is essentially the angle subtended between two covalent bonds, as you can see in the left diagrams. And the other thing is the atomic arrangement about the central atom. So how the at atoms arrange about the central atom. And we often use a name of a shape to describe the manner or the orientation or the arrangement in which the atoms will arrange about the central atom. So now, let's look at the cases of all the molecules that you will face in molecular geometry in A-level. So the first case is when there are two electron pairs and two surrounding atoms. So, there are two electron pairs about a central atom and they will try to repel each other as far as away as possible so we will end up with the largest possible angle so that is the basis of molecular geometry the electron pairs will always repel each other as far away as possible so in a spherical manner when two electron pairs are as far as away from each, each other as possible the bond angle is at its maximum so that is 180 degrees so therefore we end up with a straight molecule or a linear shaped molecule where we have three atoms along a linear linear line so this shape is one dimensional and this shape of uh, the arrangement is known as the linear shape okay so let's now look at the case where there are three electron pairs in the case where there are three electron pairs you will always face in a level situations with three surrounding atoms so again these electron pairs will try to repel each other around the spherical nature of the central atom as far as possible from each other to create the largest, again, possible angle. Okay, so around a spherical nature, when three electron pairs repel each other, you end up with the largest possible angle of 120 degrees. So similarly, 
what we're trying to do here is take 360 degrees scope and dividing it by the number of electron pairs. So previously it was 360 divided by 2, you end up with a bond angle of 180 degrees. So in this case, where there are 3 electron pairs, we take 360 divided by 3, we end up with a bond angle of 120 degrees. So that is uh, the shape of the molecule with 3 electron pairs and 3 surrounding atoms. And as you can see, this three surrounding atoms will form a triangular arrangement. And this atom is known as a planar molecule. It is no longer two-dimensional. It is three-dimensional. And it for why is it called trigonal? Because the surrounding atoms form a triangle amongst each other. Okay, so using this basis, uh, can you try to deduce the shape when there are four electron pairs? Is it going to be square planar or is it going to be something else? Okay. So when there are four electron pairs, in the first case where there are four surrounding atoms, we end up with a shape known as a tetrahedral, or when the corners or the atoms will form a tetrahedron amongst each other. Okay, why is it a tetrahedral and not, not a square planar? So from a square planar, you will end up with a bond angle of 90 degrees. However, if you were allowed, if you were to allow the electrons to freely repel each other about the spherical nature of the atom, you will end up with them repelling each other at a maximum angle of 109.5 degrees, where they are most comfortable and where they are most stable, which is at the tetrahedral structure. Okay, So they will form a tetrahedral arrangement, the pairs of electrons, and as a result, we have uh, four surrounding atoms forming a tetrahedral arrangement about the central atom. Okay, So this is the most stable arrangement for a four electron pair situation and four surrounding atoms okay so now what happens if we take away one atom and we end up with one lone pair of electrons okay so obviously the shape is going to be different because we no longer again have the top atom so we end up with not a tetrahedron but a pyramid more specifically a triangular based pyramid so this shape is known as a trigonal by a, a, sorry, a trigonal pyramidal shape, okay? And as you can see, the bond angle has decreased from 109.5 degrees to 107 degrees. Why? This is because lone pairs will repel stronger than bonding pairs. So since they repel stronger, what the lone pairs basically d do is they collapse this little pyramid at the bottom, causing the, causing the bonding uh, angle to slightly reduce. And there is a strategic uh, way in which we can determine how much it has reduced. And that is uh, minus 2.5 degrees per lone pair. So um, in the next case, when we have two lone pairs, the bond angle will reduce 2.5 again, 2.5 degrees again. So we end up with a bonding angle of 104.5 degrees. So this shape now is a planar shape because there are three atoms joined amongst each other. And it is it forms a v-shape or it is also known as a linear bent shape okay and this bond angle is 104 degrees 104.5 degrees as a result of the two lone pairs of electrons so from there we have basically looked at situations of four electron pairs and now let's look at when there are five electron pairs what shape does that form is it going to be weird oh hell yeah so the shape in which five electron pairs will try to repel each other will be the trigonal bipyramidal shape okay which is basically a triangular a, a trigonal planar shape in the middle with two atoms directly above and below the central atom okay so as a result as i said there's a trigonal planar shape in the middle you will have a 120 degrees bond angle similar to when there were three electron pairs and since there are two electrons directly above and below the central atom of our trigonal planar shape, we end up with another bond angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so as a result, this shape we end up with is known as a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement, which is when you join the uh, surrounding atoms together, you end up with a trigonal bipyramidal shape, which is basically two pyramids bipyramidal place on top of each other as you can see there so feel free to stop my videos uh, to just take a note or take a screenshot of the slides so now let's look at the case where we have six electron pairs so not five but six now so six 
electron pairs and inevitable you will always face when there are six surrounding atoms. So you end up with a shape known as the octahedral, which is basically when the electron pairs are allowed to freely repel each other at the maximum possible angle. You end up with a square planar molecule in the middle with two atoms above and below the central atom. You end up with a octahedral shape. All right. So why is it called an octahedral? Because when you join up all the surrounding atoms together, you will form an octahedron. Okay. There we go. So the bond angle as a result of the octahedron is 90 degrees at all bonding angles. Okay. So let's quickly summarize our video. So here are all the cases that you will face in A level. First of all is when we have two electron pairs and two atoms, we have a linear shape. Three electron pairs and three atoms, we have a trigonal planar shape. And four electron pairs and four atoms, we have a tetrahedral shape. With our four electron pairs and three atoms, we end up with a trigonal pyramidal shape. When where there are four electron pairs and two atoms, we end up with a V-shaped shape. <laughs> when there are five electron pairs and five atoms, we end up with trigonal bipyramidal shape. And where there are octi where it's, sorry, there's a six electron pairs and six atoms, we end up with an octahedral shape. So there are all the names of the all the cases that you will face in A-level. This is literally the cheat sheet that you should use. Take a screenshot of this slide, all right? And keep it in your notes and learn this slide. So this is the most important two slides that you should take away from this video. And that's it. I hope revision is going well for all of you. And good luck.